In this video, we're going to look at how we can use Azure Data Factory to perform an upsert as we're copying data from table storage to an Azure SQL database. Now, before we get into the build, it's important to understand the copy activity's default behavior in Azure Data Factory. So let's just run through a couple of these scenarios. So in this first example, we have some data employee records within some type of source. It may be blob storage or another SQL database. And we want to copy that data into a sync, an Azure SQL DB. So in this scenario, if we build out our copy, um, copy activity within Azure Data Factory pipeline, the copy would succeed. The data didn't exist in the sync and the, the three records were copied um, from our source. Now, if we progress into scenario two, there is some data now in our sync due to our previous copy. Our source now has three new records with completely different primary keys, four, five, and six. So in this instance, if the copy activity was to be executed once more, it would succeed again. The default behavior for Azure Data Factory's copy activity is to be in this append only state. So as long as the records in the source don't exist in the sync, each copy would be fine and will just continue to append to the sync's records. But in this last scenario, it's something that I hit during um, some work that I was doing in a passion project where while some records, say like in this instance, we have Nelson Muntz, if it's a brand new record and the primary key that doesn't exist in the sync, we have Bart Simpson with the primary key of three, which does. So in this scenario, if we were to execute the copy activity within the pipeline, we're gonna get an error in it. The SQL DB is probably gonna be something along the lines of the message down here, where we have a violation of the primary key constraint. So in Azure Data Factory, we're gonna run through a demo of how we can alter this behavior to go from a pen only state to an upsert, which essentially means if record exists in our sync, we want to perform an update. In this instance, Bart Simpson's role would have been updated from head of marketing to software engineer. And if the record doesn't exist, we want to do an insert. Okay, so let's get started with the build. So in terms of prerequisites for this demo, you're going to need an Azure Data Factory resource, an Azure Storage account, general purpose V2, and a SQL database. So I've already pre-created these resources, but you'll need those ready to go if you're gonna follow along. Now, to create our source data, it's gonna be some table storage uh, within our storage account. So I'm using Azure Storage Explorer. If we navigate down to tables and create a table called employee, and then we'll import some uh, sample data which I have available on um, on the website. So here's our sample data. Now, if you're not familiar with table storage, um, each row needs to be uniquely identified through the combination of partition key and row key. Um, you know, you look up the ta um, table storage documentation if you're interested in that kind of stuff. But so basically, our partition key is our in this case department. A row key is our user ID. Uh, we have the default timestamp, which comes with um, our table storage. And we have attributes like first name, gender, last name, and role. So that's our table storage all set up. Okay, so that's step one in terms of prepping the source. Step two, we need to prep our sync, which is our SQL database. So three things that we're gonna need to do to prep our sync. One is create the, a table to hold our data as we're copying it through. We're gonna to need to create a data type, which will make a bit more sense later as we look at the store procedure, which is the last thing that we need to create, which will have a dependency on that data type. So all the code uh, for each of these three objects, uh, they're on the blog and we can simply copy and paste. So let's start off with the table. And within the Azure portal, I've already logged on to my SQL database and so I'm just gonna run these scripts. So the first one is to create our employee table, which has a schema that we will mimic um, the data that we wanna capture. Okay, so that's our table created. Second, we need to create a custom data type called employee type. And you can see that the uh, schema of the employee type 
matches essentially the um, the source with our row key partition key then our last um, object that we need to create is the stored procedure now this will be invoked as part of the um, copy activity within the data factory pipeline so when we get to building the pipeline we'll see that we'll be referring to the stored procedure which actually performs the upset okay so that's it that's step two in step three we'll start to build our pipeline so let's jump over to data factory and we'll build our pipeline out so rather than building from a blank slate we can use the copy data wizard to fast track the build okay so we'll give our pipeline a name so copy table storage to sql db so in terms of our source we want to select the table storage connection source Table storage, pick our subscription and our storage account. So we'll see and find our table and we'll see a preview of the data. And now, in terms of our sync, we want to pick Azure SQL DB. Let's rename this for some more friendly names. So we've got connection, des uh, destination, Azure SQL. DB just type in the credentials okay so we want the employee table from the table storage as a source pointing to the table story employee um, table within the destination uh, and you can see here there's a button if we expand um, where we can use a stored procedure and because the stored procedure was already created, it's uh, listed here. So we've got the SP upsert employee. Um, so we'll click on next. And now we need to do our mapping. So we've got, we'll just make sure that it's all mapped correctly. So we've got row key to row key, partition key to partition key, first name, first name, last name, last name, gender, gender, role. Um, so that's been picked up from our employee type within our database as well as the um, schema that's from our source and lastly we'll just um, adjust our parallel copies since it's a fairly simple job to one um, so that we don't use too many of our resources okay that looks good hit finish We'll just check our pipeline so you can see our pipeline is quite simple we just have the single copy activity and as we've gone through the wizard everything's been populated now source and sync don't have the most friendly names so we might just change those to data sets table storage employee Sets SQL DB employee. So we hit publish all just to save all our changes. Okay, our changes have been saved. So if we run through our copy activity, so we have our source table storage, we have our sync, which is the Azure SQL DB, which is invoking a store procedure which is using our data type of employee type. The mappings are correct and that's it. So let's invoke this and, and give it a test run. So we, if we hit trigger, okay, so our initial execution was a success. So if we go back to the portal, and let's run a new query now. Select star from employee. 
we should see our record from our source now in our sync. Okay, so that looks good. But if our store procedure and our upsert is working, um, the real test is in the subsequent execution. So let's go back to our table storage and just change some data. So we'll we'll change uh, John Zoe from being the wizard of light bulb moments to chief evangelist. Okay, so we can see that that change has happened. Now if we go back to the portal and we find John Snow, we can see there in the sync is still the wizard of light bulb moments. So let's rerun our pipeline. Okay, our pipeline has finished executing and it's uh, succeeded. So let's go back to our sync. And we'll pick on Jon Snow. So select star from employee where employee ID. Snow J. Okay, so if we look at Jon Snow's now, we can see that his role's been updated, so it's performed an upsert and he's been changed to a chief evangelist. Okay, so if our pipeline's complete. We um, finished step three, which was to bring it all together. And if you look over at the blog, I have a graphic which kind of explodes that copy activity out so you can see what's happening at, um, in all the different components or all the different settings at a glance. So in the center, we have our copy activity itself. And you can see the links between the source and the sync um, in terms of our uh, data set table storage employee and our data set SQL DB employee and activity has references to that stored procedure to be invoked as it does the copy and our sync um, it has a reference to the data type that we mentioned uh, that we created of employee type we have the employee object that was created and the table and our link services to provide our connectivity so that's it. That's how you perform an upsert by copying data, uh, copying data from table storage to Azure SQL DB using Data Factory.